They've won the last four. Bill Guthridge had made light of that at the press conferences. Navy won six of seven over the years against Carolina. We're going a long way back, though. First half, the Tar Heels kind of a careless start. Shimon Williams turns it over. Twelve turnovers in the first half for the Heels. They would eventually get revved up. Vince Carter gets it from Coda. They don't see a lot of moves like that in the Patriot League. 38-28 on halftime. The Heels led by 10. They begin to dominate guys inside as expected. Shimon Williams driving through. He had 15. And then a 19-2 run with Jamison. I'll tell you, Jamison, my choice is player of the year. Just dominant. Just too tough on the interior. Not only for Navy, but for everybody all year long, guys. He's just sensational. Over the triple team, he gets the rebound. A much shorter Navy team. Hassan Booker is a game player, but he's 6'3". Trying to guard Jamison. That is a bit of a mismatch. Watch Okalaja the off-balance pass ahead to Carter and Vince throws it down. He had 14 points, most of them in the open floor like that. The midshipman missing spring break to play in this game and Antoine Jamison, he had a bloody nose in the first half, took an elbow back a few minutes later, no problem. Midwestern Collegiate Conference early in the first half, the 49ers Sean Colson, who too much quickness all afternoon. Pull up jumper Colson, the pass penetrates dishes off the big guy underneath the Marco Johnson. 19-13 Charlotte at that point. UIC goes to Mark Miller. Ties the game back up at 21, but then Colson too much, Dick. I'll tell you, Colson could stroke the basketball and also Mr. Johnson. Colson from downtown hitting the trifecta. DeMarco was sensational. I think DeMarco Johnson is the best player in America nobody knows about. Colson and Johnson had 30 of the 49ers, 36 points in the first half. More of the same. Johnson, you see there on the offensive glass. Colson to Johnson, the lay-in and the foul. We agree, UIC belonged in this tournament, but UNC Charlotte quietly has had a great season. They've played in the shadow with the Tar Heels and the Blue Devils in that state all season long. These guys can play. They get the 15-point victory in the 8-9 game to Mark Mackey. Guy who tossed in 37 and a big win on the SEC semis. Gets the shot to go off the glass. Gamecocks have the early lead. Richmond hanging tough. Brown knocks down the triple, back within two. Ten seconds to go now in the half here. Brown again. Around the screen, slides to his right. Richmond had a five-point lead at the break. You can see the concern on Fogler's face. They built the lead to seven. Jared Stevenson to Eric Poole for the punch out. Richmond's up nine. South Carolina tries to come back. Watson finds Leron Williams. Cuts it down to four. Later, it's down to one. Stevenson. Hit the big shot. <laughs> Richmond goes back up 56-54. Gamecocks still fighting from behind. Mackey again with the triple. Lead back to one for Richmond. Now seven seconds to go. They take it with Mackey. The whole world knows he's going to take this shot. They rotate over. They get some help on it. Play an analyst there. Richmond holds on. The miss shot. South Carolina's knocked out again, Digger. What a key to the Brown. I, I just saw Marcellus Brown played very well, under control, knew what he was going up against B.J. Mackey. Richmond only six turnovers, and of course, Stevenson playing big, an unsung hero who now steps up and gets... Impressive and seemed to be sailing against the Huskies here. Corey Braggs, nice dish to James Posey. The hoop and the harm. Musketeers up at that point. 16 seconds left in the second half. Xavier protecting a one-point lead. Deion Luton, he had missed two critical free throw seconds before. Hits the shot. You can see that Skip Prosser's mom can barely stand to watch as Xavier tries to go for the win in the final seconds. The fall away by Lumpkin doesn't go, but it's knocked out of bounds off a of Husky. Yes, Bob Bender, they have one final chance with 1.7 seconds to go, but the big interior defense for Washington gets it done, and Bob Bender... Many believe Washington a little bit of an imposter in this NCAA tournament, but they knock off a Xavier team that many people had advancing deep in their bracket. This is a surprise. It's the first 11 over 6 since Boston College beat who, Quinn? Indiana, Indiana. in 96. Post-game reaction. <laughs> We're here with uh, Washington State. Uh, please keep in mind that... Uh, hold up, hold up, hold up. I'm sorry, Washington, excuse me. Yeah. I know that when we look at the stat sheet, this is not going to be an easy one to describe. I guess when Coach Newton said uh, on the selection telecast, they asked about us. He said they were a hard, hard team to figure. Now that you've seen how we sometimes win, you understand that. I don't know about coaches. All they wanted and a lot more from the Lumberjacks, who were okay today. Shot clock running out. Kawika Akina penetrates. Wow. Camp throws in the prayer. NAU up by five at the break. Bearcats toughen up.
Rod Hutchins pass stolen by Bobby Brandon, who shows the speed, the agility, the lay-in, and the flex in Cincinnati up by one. NAU, though, just kept responding. Akina the steal from Kenyon Martin. Michael McNair blows the layup, but there's Casey Frank, who played a gutty game, ripping it away. Ball away goes. Lumberjacks by six in the second half. Time running out. Bearcats up three. Michael McNair, the deep three. That's why the Lumberjacks are number two in the NCAA. After a timeout, here's Juan Baker. Does he catch him off guard here? Around the screen, they don't pick him up. He breaks the tie yes. with 3.6 seconds to go. Lumberjacks don't call a timeout. Akina, desperation heave for the tie. He Ooh. front rims it. And Huggy escaping. The players not excited about going to Boise. Thought they were shipped too far out. Probably didn't take Northern Arizona very seriously. A team that came rolling in with nine straight wins, Digger escapes. Well, I'll tell you another thing about Northern Arizona. They did a great job of bringing their bench in a key time. The NCAA tournament. Well, Pepe Sanchez had a tough game against the West Virginia press, just threw it away. The Owls, 11 turnovers. Didn't sound like a lot, but it was critical in this game. West Virginia was able to play at their tempo. Move the ball well. They work it around. Damian Owens finds himself open. A 12-point Mountaineer lead. You know, they didn't reach double figures tempo until four minutes to go in the first half. More problems for Pepe Sanchez, who's going to play for Argentina in the World Championships if he can make the team. Off the press, Greg Jones behind the back. Press. Solheim tosses it down and the Solheim clan enjoying things out in Boise, West Virginia in an absolute behind the woodshed beating. And they know about woodsheds in West Virginia. Solheim finishes with 13. The Owls are clubbed. Maybe Catlett and company doing the draw a favor by knocking out Temple. 82-52 is Temple's worst ever NCAA loss. And Cheney after the game bashing his team, especially Lamont Barnes. Lamont played uh, real bad today. Didn't challenge anybody coming to the, to the basket. Maybe he just fell alone because he didn't get too much help. When you have to depend on two freshmen to lead you, it's like a child. Uh, for parents to depend on children to lead them, it's not good. Station's team coming in. First half, Maryland would blow out to a big 11-point lead. Marcus Saxon, though, in traffic. Good player for the Aggies. Chipping away at the lead. And then Saxon with the triple. A 12-zip. Utah State run cut the lead down to four. Now, under the uh, net there, Farrow Davis trying to avoid getting undercut. Grabs the net. It's the old tearaway net. <laughs> it took, it seemed like 25 minutes to fix the thing. Did the lay have any effect on the Aggies? Go down Maryland, I'll tell you that, because they jumped out 18 to 7, and next thing you know, Marcus Saxon gets 16 points in that first half. Kevin Rice gets tough inside. They got a ball game. You see the Kaverick steal the profit dunk, and then Kevin Rice would answer. Oh. Cuts the lead down to eight points. Oh, second look half. at that little show. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, he's bricked it. He's bricked it. <laughs> I tell you, we had some adventures around the rim in the net this afternoon. On the inbounds, missing again. Hello. Utah State 0 for 9, guys, to start the second half. They needed a good start after the intermission. It didn't happen. Region against Oklahoma. Corey Brewer getting his baseline swerve on Brewer. 22.7 rebounds. Free throw tied the game at 80. But Andre Patterson, six seconds left, chance to win it. His shot is rejected by Ryan Murphy. We go to overtime. In the extra frame, Oklahoma's run would end. Nice. Who's your passing? Luke Recker. William Gladness for the fat mojo. Gladness had 12. Hoosiers went wild, shooting 60% from the floor. They go on to win it. 94 to 87. Three Hoosier players, Andre Patterson, A.J. Guyton, and Luke Recker, each scored at least 20 points. You think the Hoosiers were bad with three straight first-round losses before this? The Sooners have now lost five straight first-round games. But afterwards, Bobby Knight wanted to talk money, 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 money. Well, Coach, I got to ask you, you paid $10,000 to coach that game. Was it worth it? If I'd have had these same three officials in that other game or any one of the three of them, I'd be, I'd have saved $10,000. I mean, I, I thought that as the game was going along. Mostly thought that when we were ahead. <laughs> 15 seed Fairley Dickerson, second seed UConn Elijah Allen was blowing up. Three points. He had 43, most in attorney game since Glenn Robinson hit for 44 back in 94, but UConn turned it up. Richard Hamilton off the he's a Hamilton had 30. Khalid El Amin had 28. 
UConn survives a scare from Fairley Dickinson, but wins it 93 to 85. Fairley Dickinson, how about this contact? Mateen Cleaves, nine inches taller, treats Earl Boykins like he was still 13 years old. Cleaves, 20 points. Boykins had an off night, six of 21, and then over to the fat lady sing and the lights go out, which the lights did. They went out. I guess that's why the Whalers left the Hartford's East Regional 5th seed Princeton, 12th seed UNLV Princeton hot from the outside. Brian Earl, I reckon he had five threes. Mm -hmm. I reckon Princeton on a 20 to two run. Mm -hmm. But Princeton uses the back door. Steve Goodrich hits Earl on the back door cut. Earl had 21. Goodrich hits Gabe Luellis. Luellis had 17. Princeton, 19 of the 27 baskets came off of a halftime deficit down to one. Pat Bradley for three. Puts Arkansas up by two. And they go on to beat Nebraska 74 to 65. I'll tell you, Miles Simon did blow a dunk and Michael Dickerson had an air ball, so they weren't perfect, but close. Dickerson freaking the oop. He had 17 points and an exclamation point. Our tactic was to jump them from the start and not let up. They didn't zone a rolls 99 to 60. You know, Arizona last year, they won all six of their NCAA tournament games by a combined 32 points. They win the opener here by 39 points alone. Eight seed Tennessee, ninth seed Illinois State, game tied at 72, five seconds left. Rico Hill put up 23 shots on the day, a chance to win, but it rimmed out. Rico only hit six of those 23 shots. We're going to overtime, five seconds left in OT. Illinois State down 81-80. Kyle Cartmill inside for Dan Muller for the layup. Cartmill, six assists, Redbirds up one. Tennessee, one last chance. Vegas Davis, one of only two Vowles who didn't score and played, had a good look from 35, couldn't get it. Illinois State wins it in overtime, 82 to 81. The Redbirds get their first NCAA tournament victory in 13 years. The Volunteers still have not won an NCAA tournament game in 15 years. Hey, despite committing six of his team's 17 turnovers, Kyle Cartmill had those six assists I told you about and nine points. Illinois used 13 steals.